Good afternoon and welcome to the Software Engineering Institute's webinar series. My name is Shane McGraw, your moderator for today, and I'd like to thank you all for attending today's virtual tutorial. Our webinar series presentation today is part one of Architecture and Design of Service-Oriented Systems by Grace Lewis. Grace is a senior member of the technical staff at the SEI at Carnegie Mellon University. Lewis has over 20 years of professional software development experience, mainly in industry. Her main areas of expertise include service-oriented architecture, cloud computing, and mobile applications. And now I will turn the presentation over to Grace Lewis. Grace, all yours. Thank you very much, and welcome everybody to the first part of this uh, webinar slash tutorial on architecture and design of service-oriented systems. Uh, the goals for, the for this tutorial are very simple. Um, in part one, what we're going to focus on is basic concepts related to software architecture design, um, just because like everybody else in the field, we have our own terminology. That is what is I'm going to use throughout the presentation. And the second part uh, of today will be the impact of service orientation on system quality. So we're going to talk about how service orientation affects things such as performance, and security, modifiability, etc. The second part of this presentation will be next week. And what we will talk about SOA infrastructure design considerations. We're going to decompose the enterprise service bus into patterns and tactics. And then we're going to talk about principles of service design. In the end, what we want to do is provide a starting point um, to start looking at quality attributes as a way to design infrastructure and services for service-oriented systems. There is the, the content of the tutorial. Today is part one. And let's get started. So, what is service-oriented architecture? Service-oriented architecture is it's a way of designing, developing, deploying, and managing systems. One of my pet peeves is that you will not see me using SOA as a noun. Why? Because I want to I want to make clear that is it is not a thing. It is not something that you can buy out of the box. What it is is almost like an architectural style, a paradigm, an architectural pattern. You could even think about it. And if we look at it from an architectural style perspective, what we can see is that there are several components that make up this style. The first component is the services, and what they do is they provide reusable business functionality via well-defined interfaces. The second component are the service consumers, which are the applications, the portals, the things that you build using functionality from these services. Now, a characteristic of this style is that clear separation between service interface and service implementation. In addition to promoting portability, what that means is that the service interface now becomes a very important part of your system, almost as much as a service implementation. Grace, we're going to move you a little closer to the microphone. It's some, we're having some some complaints of, of uh, the volume being too low, so we, we're going to slide her a little closer to the mic, folks. And um, sorry to interrupt, but let's nope, let's try that, folks. That's perfectly fine, and and keep the feedback coming. Um, the the third component is the SOA infrastructure. And what the SOA infrastructure does is that it enables discovery, composition, and eventually invocation of these services. Now, when we talk about architecture, we have to talk about components and we have to talk about connectors. So in the service-oriented systems, in, over, when we talk about connectors, we can talk about the protocols that are predominantly, but not exclusively, message-based document exchanges, typically based on XML. If we're going to talk in detail about some of those components, first of all, like I said before, services are reusable components, and what they represent are business or operational tasks. Uh, you can think of them as steps in a business process, for example, customer lookup, credit card validation, weather, etc. A characteristic of services, and also what has what has promoted, I guess, this architectural style is that they can be globally distributed across organizations precisely because of that separation between interface and implementation. And they, they can also be reconfigured into new business processes, which is why there is that emphasis on reusable. Um, the third thing about services is that service interface definitions are well-defined artifacts and they're available in some form of the service registry. This is almost a requirement of the architectural style. If you can't find out what services are out there, then it's almost like defeating the purpose of this architectural style. And what I mean by registry is not necessarily a very sophisticated registry product. It could be a web page, it could be a wiki page, it could be a just some type of document that says here are the services within our organization and this is how you would use these services. 
The second component of the architectural style is the SOA infrastructure. And basically that is the set of technologies, you could also call it middleware, that sits in between the service consumers and the services. So we're talking about, first of all, we're talking about those products and standards and protocols that enable the communication. Um, examples of, of these products and standards and protocols are products based on web services, whether it's the WS Star or the REST implementation of web services. We're talking about message-oriented middleware. An example is IBM Web Serum Q. Uh, it could be a publish subscribe type of protocol. For example, there are service-oriented systems built on using J uh, Java, JMS or Java Messaging Service. Or we could even think about CORBA. CORBA could be a way of, of, of looking at the SOA infrastructure. And just as a, as a, as a piece of information, the, the largest uh, service-oriented system that has been documented or reported, there might be others that are larger, is from Credit Suisse. And Credit Suisse, most of their infrastructure is, is CORBA-based and is still CORBA-based because it provides what they need. Um, so that is one part of the infrastructure. Now, the other part is, that is considered part of the SOA infrastructure are what I call infrastructure services, which are basically those services that sit as part of the middleware, such as security, discovery, and group.